Okay, this is uh, my video for the week, and I'm going to try and get this to focus in on you. This is what I spent. This is pretty much, pretty much for me, this is what uh, I spend about mm, every three, four months I go to Walmart. I don't go there very, very often. Um, but what I was going in there for today was, and I hope you can see it, I went in and I got uh, 25 pounds of sugar, which were $16.54, and I got some uh, Great Value Chicken, which was in the two-pack, and the canned two-pack, that was $5.98. And I got uh, 10 pounds of potatoes for $9.27. Now, what am I going to do with the chicken and the potatoes? Well, I'm going to make a recipe. And it's called baked potato soup base. Okay? So you need about 15 pounds of peeled uh, chunk potatoes, which I have. I had 5 pounds here already. Uh, you need 10 cups of chicken or vegetable broth. Now, what I use is I use bouillon cubes, and I normally stick an extra bouillon cube in each quart. And this makes 13 quarts, by the way. One diced onion. I don't use diced onion. I use either onion powder or minced onion. Uh, two tablespoons of butter. I don't use regular butter. I use unsalted Amish butter. Okay, you can use regular butter. I've used it for both. It's no problem. One teaspoon of ground mustard. One tablespoon of parsley. I use my own. One tablespoon of pepper. Uh, got the Amazon brand. Okay. One tablespoon of salt. That's optional. I do put that in, but I use pink Himalayan salt. And you can get that off of uh, Doug and Stacy. That's the best salt out there. Uh, you can put in one quarter cup diced ham. I don't. I use the actually great value uh, chopped chicken is what I use. And I drain it. Okay. So what you uh, want to do is you want to take your broth and your seasonings uh, along with your butter. And you want to bring that to a boil. Uh, then you want to reduce your heat and... I don't do this. I put my potatoes in my canning jars, okay? And then I take this broth and pour it over top of my raw potatoes. And the reason I do that is, is I have found that it um, doesn't make the potatoes like mashed potatoes in the jar, okay? Uh, now, you're going to need a pressure canner. And you want to make sure that you have at least one inch of headspace, okay? But you're going to need a pressure canner, uh, 10 pounds for 90 minutes. Now, you want to adjust that for your sea level. So make sure whatever canner you're using that you're going by their guide for your sea level. I am at sea level here. So mine is 10 pounds for 90 minutes, okay? Um, then once... Once you have pressure canned it, took it out of the pressure canner, set it on, set it on either your your cooling pads or your your cooling racks or whatever. Once they have sealed, and now you're going to go and cook it. So what I do is I empty one quart of this into a big pan and then I add one can of carnation evaporated milk. Now you can use whatever evaporated milk you have but I add one can of carnation's evaporated milk and I bring that up to a boil and, and uh, then if I want to add any kind of fresh vegetables or, or any other type of, of stuff to that that's when I do that, okay? Um, you can also, uh, you know, to make it thicker, you can add a cup of sour cream. I really like that. 
Uh, you can top with shredded cheese. I did like that. You know, you top it with shredded cheese. Maybe maybe use crush up some Ritz crackers is my favorite. I, I take a single pack of personal size Ritz crackers, crush that up, add it to it. And one bowl, uh, you'll get three bowls out of the pot. But one bowl will normally feed a person, okay? So uh, this is an easy way to get started on canning. Is a simple recipe like this. I use this recipe. I normally make 26 quarts for me to last through winter because I absolutely love it, okay? And uh, it'll last me... It'll last me from this weekend when I make it. It will last me until next year about this time. I just literally used my last jar that I did last year. So you have to figure out for your family, is one quart going to be enough or are you going to need to use two quarts? For each quart of this potato soup mix, you want to add one can of the carnation uh, canned milk. Now, what I'm talking about, I want to make sure I get this to you. Yeah, I know. I got dirty sink again. <laughs> this is the carnation milk I use, and it is... 12 fluid ounces. So one can of this per quart of the potato soup mix. So what I like to do, and you see I got it in my little rotation stock here. What I like to do is I like to take my canning jar, right, and use the wide lid, folks. It makes it a lot easier. Use the wide lid for this. I take my canning jar I take my canned milk and I set them together like this on the shelf. So when I go to grab this, I'm just grabbing this right here and this is a meal. This is a meal. Now, um, if you don't want to do that and you want to leave it like up here, like I have right now, you can do that too. You can leave it on your shelf. Just realize for every quart, every quart jar, you're going to use one of those canned milks. And um, I use McCormick's or my own on the spices. And I use Weiler's uh, chicken bouillon cubes. Or I go and I buy a can of chicken broth at the Dollar General. I mean, it just all depends on what they've got. But it normally will take me four or five hours to do one batch. Now, if your canner's like mine, and I have a smaller canner, I have the, the All-American small canner, um, and I will say this, if you add a little bit of cream of tartar spice to your canner water before you put your jars in, it kind of helps with the condensation inside the canner. And um, I can thank Cheryl Apothecary on MeWe for that. She is the one that gave me that idea. And, and it, it helps keep the inside of the canner clean. Because um, when you start pressure canning, the inside of your canner can change color. And that helps to keep it from changing color. Now, you don't have to do that. I do it about every second or third batch. It just helps keep the inside of the canner clean. Um, I also do not use my pressure canner on my glass top stove. You, this glass top stove, I can do that if I so wish. 
However, I found with my Presto, which is why I've got an All-American, I found with my Presto canner that if, uh, what it did was it would heat up the element, slow down the element, heat up the element, slow down the element, and it caused the bottom of my Presto canner to bulge out. So now I can't use my Presto pressure canner as a pressure canner. I can only use it as a water bath canner. And, and so I had to go and buy another pressure canner, which is why I've got the All-American. Now, since I do have a glass top stove, I went online and I found a commercial hot plate. Now, this is the best one I have found, and it has lasted me, oh, it's going on three years now. And I want to get you the right name on this. Get you the right name on this, because this is actually... Okay, it's not it's it's a CADCO. C C A D C O CADCO hot plate. And it's a commercial hot plate. And this is the best one that I have found. And now I'm gonna have a hard time doing it one-handed trying to get that back in the box. But it's the best one that I have found to um keep a steady temperature with the weight of my All-American. Um, so when you buy a hot plate for your pressure canner, you want to make sure that it can handle the weight because um, you're not only got the weight of your canner, but you also have the weight of the water and what's in your jars. So... Uh, you want to make sure that you check that for your weight. Um, like I said, I got the CADCO, C-A-D-C-O, commercial hot plate. And I say commercial because the regular hot plates will not handle the weight of the pressure canner. So you always want to make sure... I, I can't reiterate this enough. You always want to make sure when you are canning anything, you want to make sure that the area is clean and that everything is sterilized, okay? But you also want to make sure that you use the proper equipment for what you're doing. Now, you'll see videos online that say you can water bath everything yes the Amish do that I don't know how to do that so I go by the ball canning book and I also go by this book right here which is canning and preserving for dummies if you are absolutely new to canning I highly recommend that you go find a copy of this and read it because that's how I started and I can a lot of stuff now. Now, also on my trip today, I also bought sugar. Now, what I'm going to do with the sugar is I'm going to separate the sugar out. And now let's go in the other room. Yeah. Everybody's like, wow, you, you ain't got nothing. Yeah, okay. Whatever. All right. So, what I do with my sugar... And this is my flour. But I take my sugar and I put my sugar in little canning jars, okay, little pint jars. I do not add an oxygen absorber to my canning jars because if you do, then your canning jars, the, the, the oxygen absorber will make the sugar a block. And the only way you're going to get that sugar out is to break the jar. So don't add an oxygen absorber to sugar. So I put my sugar in jars or I make my own, um, which is what I'm going to do. I, I make my own uh, jams 
and and as you can see I do can um, now there are some mistakes that I've made and I'm going to point those out barbecue this was a mistake all of this right here this whole line right here I've got to take and dump out and re-sterilize these jars because barbecue sauce will not last it will spoil in the jar and that's what's happened here and as you can see I made this last June and oops okay venison my venison is good this is from 2019 I don't know if you can see that it's still good I still check it my stew from 2020 still good I still got two jars left see that I still got my beef stew stock French onion soup I made nine quarts of this this will be going in the trash I did not like it at all and as you can see how the onions come up to the top that is no good so chicken vegetable soup good still good made them in 2021 this this way I have found that if you use it within five to ten years it's still good but you want to keep it as you can see I have it in a room that there's no light in here okay this is pretty much my canning room there's no light in here you notice the dog did not even attempt to come up in here he knows better so when I do my canning I'm in this room and everything gets done in this room because this room has no possibility of dog care no possibility of anything and I do it all standing right here um, I would highly recommend that if you have a chance because I noticed today when I was in Walmart that uh, this is the first time they've had the 25 pound bags in the last nine months okay because I went there three months ago they didn't have any went there six months ago they didn't have any went there nine months ago they didn't have any today they only had three now being who I am I could have took all three but I says you know what I don't need that much because I still got some on my shelf that I put up last year so for me I store for a year now I have expanded obviously I've expanded my storage to be up to two years um I highly recommend that you learn how to can and and if if all you do is can dry goods <laughs> you know what here you go this is vegetable soup it's all canned up all I gotta do is add it to water boom I got vegetable soup okay all I got to do is boil the water with the vegetable soup in it and I've got vegetable soup now I can add meat to that I can do whatever with that okay um so that's what I have for you today um that was my weekly purchase you know at Walmart where I just wanted to show you that for $25 you know well I'll even go up $30 for $30 I'm going to get 13 quarts of potato soup um and that's going to last me 26 to 30 meals depending on how much i eat and how much he eats because he eats it too so if you don't if you want to feed that to your pets don't add the onion to it okay so i do make the potato soup mix sometimes without the onion um the onion you can add the onion when you're cooking it if if you want to not take the chance which is what I do you you can add the onion 
uh, when you actually go to cook it to taste, um, depending on what you want to do, okay? Um, you can also, with this potato soup mi base mix, you can also add um, rice, more potatoes, whatever, whatever you have on hand. Um, what's really good is if you get drop biscuits and add it to it as you cook it. That's, that's really good, by the way. That's really, really good. Okay, that's, that's my video. And uh, as you can see, I got a package. This should be uh, my cot that I ordered off of eBay. Um, I wanted a new cot because the one I got is so hard to put together and take apart. Um, yeah. Um, now, for those who were paying attention, uh, those are my water bricks. And I will say this, as long as you store them upright like that, they're fine. But when you store them laying flat, uh, the top leaks. And I have noticed that it's kind of hard to get the water out of them. But it is a good way, you know, to have water on hand for uh, whatever you need it for, such as watering the pets, uh, washing, whatever. Okay, it's or if you're going out in the woods, it's it's awesome. Okay, that's awesome for going out in the woods for camping. Um, but it is heavy, so be aware of that. And uh, that's all I have. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and 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 get started doing what I need to do as far as my sugar and everything goes. And y'all have a blessed day. Bye, sickle.